No postmodernism. Let's not do it now because if I start talking about it, we'll be there forever. But that takes a while. I have some texts on this topic where I wrote about what I think about it. Only a dog with a pale face has the ability to step on the same rake twice. We are approaching with full force, but nowhere to run. So here's what we came up with collectively. Oleg Grigoriev, myself, and a handful of other individuals. We essentially attempted to creatively advance Marxism, which was somewhat stagnant in the 1930s and 1940s of the 20th century. Very creatively, because we've really emphasized the ideological line towards materialism, but at the end of the day, it's still a materialistic theory. But after that, it's like whatever floats your boat. For example, if you go to the professors at Renepa or HSE, they'll probably say that we idiots, maniacs, individuals lacking education, it doesn't matter there. The list of derogatory terms is well known. Come on, colleagues. We have theorists, they don't. We didn't realize how almost two hours flew by so quickly with the schedule. Well, not exactly like that, but time seemed to vanish. Firstly, I want to ask Mikhail Leonidovich, will we continue? Keep the conversation going. Well, then raise your hands. Who would like to ask more questions? All right, we have approximately five questions. That is the total number of questions we will proceed with. To commence, let us start with the main stand, shall we? Can I do it now? Can I ask a question? Thanks. Thank you so much, Mikhail Leonidovich. Tell me, please, you see the end of the scientific and technical development model. I just realized that. Tell me, please, do you believe it will be possible to maintain what has been acquired by this model? Nope. And if so, what resource? Nope. No. But I already told you, look at how much we've lost, how much we had in total, what we don't have anymore. And we had something that no one else had, and now it's gone. The same thing will happen in the world. So like a lot of the technologies that exist today won't be around in the next decade. So is this a comeback? This is a comeback, yeah. But I'm telling you again, from a consumption standpoint, we need to go back to the 30s. Well, with a few peculiarities. Because we are unlikely to abandon or forego the internet, as it has become an indispensable part of our lives. Although it's not very clear how we're going to support it financially. It's obvious that we'll lose some medical technologies. This is going to be impossible. Here you go. Well, basically, we're going to lose a lot of stuff. We're going to lose some equipment, right? Well, you see, we had these supersonic passenger planes. We don't have it here. They don't have it in Europe. It will never happen again, and so on. Let's return to the main topic. You mentioned the ongoing printing of dollars. And how will this printing of dollars impact the emission plans of other zones or countries? And will this ultimately lead to hyperinflation and distribution, as Clasio mentioned, of tangible assets in such a virtual manner as he speculated? Hyperinflation is not possible if there is no means available to deliver money effectively to the consumer. In Germany in the early 1920s, there was a card system. There was socialism in Serbia. In any country with hyperinflation, there's always a way to get money to the consumer. We don't discuss Zimbabwe. It's a mess. Who knows what occurred? However, there are individuals in the wild. So what can you anticipate from them? With regards to the United States of America, they are currently in the process of building this system. However, they have not yet shot her. So there cannot be hyperinflation there just like in Europe. So I think there will be a stockflation scenario there. So we have high inflation. Let's say it's 5.5% now, but at its peak, they will raise it to 15, 20% tops. And at the same time, of course, a constant decline. But that's just one version. It's hard to say because there's a lot of subjectivity involved here. And I was speaking to various people there who, roughly speaking, are part of the global backstage. They say that the level of hysteria among the American elite, the European elite, is very high. So like they totally freak out because they see everything is falling apart, but they don't know what to do. And it's not clear, not in the sense that you don't know which buttons to press, but in the sense that it's not even clear which panel these buttons should be on, which remote control. They don't have the language to describe what's going on. 
They're all economists. You get it? Yeah, capitalism is over for them. And there are no words to describe this. No way, Jose. This is hilarious. I was distorting the story about Domingo Covaldi due to Marxism, political economy having a philosophical language on which everything is materialistic. It is a philosophy based on materialism. And economics is a form of subjective idealism. If individuals have a desire for iPhones, they're going to make a purchase of them. Guys, where's the money coming from? What kind of money are we talking about? And we'll give them credit. And you see, they won't give me a loan. This is a difficult case. I have encountered this situation many times. Domingo Cavalli, that is an amusing name. I can just tell you another story. It's absolutely wonderful. At the same Astana Economic Forum roundtable, dialogue among leaders. They came up with this idea and reached a consensus. On one hand, you've got Nobel laureates and other experts, and on the other, you've got politicians, both retired and current. Roman Aprodi, Tony Blair, Wim Kok, and someone else I don't remember. Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, Masimov, Vice Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, this very Minister of Finance of Canada. So here they are sitting with experts on the left and politicians on the right, and me, the moderator. And my task is to crush them. So I'm asking the politicians, I'm like, guys, are you satisfied with the quality of economic expertise? There's this video on the internet of Tony Blair's face when he hears this question, and he's got this smirk on his face like, what kind of dumb questions are you asking? And these politicians, very politely, extremely politically correctly, they are Europeans, explain that economic expertise is useless. Schnobelis got offended. One of them jumped up and started saying that Economics is a good science, it's correct, it has brought benefits, referring to economism. But even others didn't support him. Schnobelli, understanding that if they start defending now, they might as well get beaten up. And then they started pushing each other again. Here, this is all a debt crisis, so we need to tighten up the budget policy in Europe and everything will be fine. Well, I'm the moderator, I'm a mean person after all. I'm getting into politics again, I'm telling you guys, look, well... We, you know, they don't understand, but we understand that debts were made. What's the point? So that these funds could be given to the people, so that they could consume more. So in order to improve the standard of living of the population. Question. If we tighten the budget policy and stop taking on more debt, how much will the standard of living of the population decrease? What's the damage? And then Masimov, the former prime minister of Kazakhstan, stands up and calmly says, According to my calculations, the level of consumption is higher than the level of real income by 20-25%. And they snob the hell out of it. And it's clear why. Because if they don't know these numbers, they're not experts, they're crooks. If they know and stay silent, then they're troublemakers. And if they don't agree with this number, guys, present your arguments. And they're silent. And the politicians, I observe them, yes, there they are seated three meters from me. They're internally nodding like that. Yeah, basically, you can argue until 15 or 25, but the order of the numbers is correct. Can you imagine a 15% drop in demand and not just any drop, but a drop below equilibrium? And of course, I asked the third question, guys. Even if the demand is 15% higher than the income, it's a crisis on the scale of the Great Depression. In the Depression, Europe had 40% joblessness rate. How are we going to sell this to the people? Here we go again, another hysterical episode, especially among journalists. And only two politicians, you know, their eyes dart, fidget with hands and feet. And I realized that in their heads in general, it was visible, true, thoughts were written on their faces, that if there is such a decline, then these same people will chase everyone away. At the events of Roman Prodi and Tony Blair, we will make our appearance in a white tuxedo showcasing elegance and style. Well, here's the thing. Mikhail Ilinich, could you kindly clarify if you're suggesting that there will be a division into global, for instance, zones which are brand new? Got it. Since there's a unified system of labor division now, Europe and the States will mostly become the technology exporters, right? And, correspondingly, they will be establishing these novel currency areas, and they have the ability to establish them, so to say, with a mine within, in order that it does not transpire like it did with Germany and the Russian Empire. Did they manage to create a mine during Stalin's industrialization? 
no dice. Did they create a mine during Chinese industrialization? No luck. If there are strong national governments, it's tough for them to lay a mine. They'll place anything you want. The whole problem we have here is that we don't have a national currency, a national payment system, or even a national economic policy. She is completely focused on the International Monetary Fund and is deeply passionate about its work and impact on global financial stability. Running behind schedule, have a question about import substitution. Therefore, in your calculations, you have mentioned the following numbers. Annual import of 400B, aiming to replace at least 50% with 200B, 200B with profitability over a span of a decade, for a duration of 10 years. With a profitability rate of 10%, we have the capacity to invest up to $2 trillion accordingly. But here you take into account the revenue, not the profit, right? It's not about the profit, it's about the income. They get redistributed throughout the economic system, but it's $200 billion that stay within the system. That's it. Got it. That doesn't mean that those who invest specifically in this production will receive this income but they will be inside the system. I understand. And for the second question, if you don't mind, based on your calculations, the GDP and as a result, the standard of living in the United States will decrease by a factor of two, three. No, 60%. Is 60% equal to 2.5x? Well, 60% drop by two, three times. No political system or society can survive such a downfall without some external factor of explanation, like a nuclear war or the arrival of Martians, in principle. So, someone has to multiply someone by zero. Purely mathematically, it turns out that either, as a result of this collapse, society should transition to some kind of military communism and direct distribution of resources, of which there is simply not enough food and some essential resources for everyone. This is multiplying by zero for the financial elites and capital in general. Basically, everyone should be rounded up into concentration camps, or at the very least, have the dissatisfied crowds shot by machine guns and forced to work for food. Mathematically, did they work for food in the 60s? Will people work for food or have military communism and socialism? Let's see. I've already purchased a bucket of popcorn. I'm sitting in the front row and I'm watching. Well, in what way would you like me to create a model of American politics for you? I'm not familiar with their psychiatry. It's not psychology. It's already psychiatry. And as per that, how is their political system organized? They can go there and go there. However, bankers have the ability to wipe out everyone, to say they're at fault. Blame it on the Martians. Well, just look at the number of movies they're making with mysterious aliens popping up. Hollywood never does anything that easy. Just a reminder, the film about the Twin Towers explosion was released prior to the actual Twin Towers being exploded. A lyrical question. So you wrote some kind of introduction to the translation of Eagleton's book, Why Marx Was Right. You know, there are other authors like Harvey who write something in your opinion, do you think there is any future for left-wing ideology in the West, or is it just going to stay the way it is? Is all this fussing? The worse life gets, more left ideas. The worse life gets, the more prospects for left-wing ideas. Why has the left idea in the West, well, not exactly died, but fallen so low? Because the middle class was raised on credit. Currently, the middle class, I haven't even addressed this topic. Thus, we discuss the dollar, its history. You know, we have an anniversary, right? Happy 300th birthday, Grandpa. That's why I didn't touch on this topic like global projects and many other things. Overall, we've developed many things in the past 10 years. I would like to ask, like as a woman, you know, as a homemaker, as a housewife, money, I understand, like a dollar, ceases to perform the function of accumulation and savings, just like a bank deposit. Similar to a bank deposit. I have an inquiry. What are the ways to save money in today's society resembling how a mother saves for her children? What is wealth in that particular sense, you know? From a particular perspective, from a holistic standpoint, there is this specific investment bank, investment company called Velas Capital, 
that should be taken into consideration. And we commenced it with them roughly around six months ago, well, three months in actuality, a project under the working title, What is an Asset? So they clarified to us at this location that a bank deposit is not considered an asset. Well, or to be more precise, a controversial asset. So now we're pushing this project, and I think in about two, three months, we'll give birth to something. So like, let's say, but that's from a business perspective. From a life perspective, well, if you kind of, roughly speaking, if you have a five-year-old daughter there and you want to save up for her inheritance, then you need to buy gold coins. So like if you need to save money for a year, that is definitely a really tough question, you know. Small amounts of money can be kept in the bank due to deposit insurance system for security. Although there are problems here too, because there might be an explosive devaluation there. So like actually this is a real problem and each person has to solve it for themselves. Unable to provide universal answer, unwilling to take responsibility. In reality, there are no guarantees whatsoever. Can I ask a local question? No, well, there are, of course, things you can't do, right? You can't, for example, take rubles, put them in a bank, and bury them in the garden, expecting them to be worth something in five years. You can't buy diamonds. That's also idiotic. And here, accordingly, you can try everything else in different conditions and in different variations. A small local inquiry. In 1933, when the U.S. government was confiscating people's gold during the gold seizure process, what was the population's reaction? What was its behavior? In tough situations with no alternatives, you can't finish or stay alive. As the Supreme Court stated, it's a violation of the law. But there's no other solution. No, no, this ain't one of those situations where you gotta shoot your way out. If someone tried to take away your business, you'd have to shoot back. And in the event that they are taking your gold jewelry there, that is still no valid reason to initiate shooting or any form of violence. They left the wedding ring, you know, there. According to the law, they were supposed to take it away. Mikhail, maybe there's something here like what happened in our country back in the 20s when commissars first went around and confiscated gold and then, for example, organized Torgsin through economic means. You know, I am unsure of the precise amount of money that the commissioners took away, as Torxin did not earn a substantial sum of money from the transaction. But you have to understand that when they selected the commissioners, they selected them based on logic. We're kind of like expropriation and expropriators. That's why they didn't take anything from normal people. If there was a regular family who, to put it bluntly, worked for a living instead of running a business, and they had about 20 gold coins lying somewhere in a drawer, no one would try to take them away. That's a well-known thing. And actually, for example, in the city of Leningrad, the most powerful expropriation was not in the 20s, but during the blockade. So I am constantly like when they initiate with me, our history is truly messed up, is it not, right? Now everyone is engaged in discussions about the victim of Stalin's terror, Lydia Ruslanova. Who is not aware of the article under which Lydia Ruslanova was arrested and placed into custody? What was the article called? Here's the title of the criminal code article. No, speculators. That's a decent word. There was another word, much scarier. Yeah, for looting. They put her in jail for looting because her husband, General Kriokov, was responsible for food supplies in Leningrad in 1941 under Zhukov. And she, surreptitiously stealing this sustenance from the soldiers, would barter it in exchange for valuable gold and precious jewels from the dying soldiers who were in desperate need. Leningradus. And upon her release in 1956, she still insisted on the return of all the items she had stolen. For this reason, I am unable to hear Lydia Ruslanova's words, which is a source of frustration and disappointment for me. Hey, Mikhail L., can I ask you something? So, I've got a couple of little questions. First, how can we attract Turkey to an economic alliance with Russia? And secondly, how will the currency be insured in these new currency zones? So, like, could it be gold or something? Manufacturing economy. Yeah, with regards to Turkey, I have a hunch that there is no need to entice it, as it already gets it all by itself without any external influence. However, that is merely a theory. We should refrain from discussing this topic at the moment. 
until the words have been verbalized. What is happening behind the scenes? That is an excellent question to inquire about and reflect upon. Let's see, I think Turkey will join Customs Union. This is my personal take. You know, Ukraine has a choice right now. Either she will negotiate something today in exchange for joining the Customs Union with Turkey, or she will wait until the moment she enters Turkey, after which no one will ask her anymore, and she will be accepted on the terms that are imposed on her. Nowhere to run. Where will she disappear to? Do you truly think that anyone in Europe is going to purchase Ukrainian goods? That's not even funny. So here I am, taking the spot where our meeting started. Any more questions? Thank you so much, Mikhail Leonidovich, for the interesting messages. We had a great time with you. In conclusion, did Oliver Pollock play a joke on us by inventing this symbol for April Fool's Day? It seems to me that it creates anticipation, raises questions, and has a significant impact on everything that's happening. May I inquire about the sign? Oh, I possess my own property, you're aware. There exists a version regarding the sign suggesting that it consists of two columns which were positioned at opposite ends of the Hercules columns, specifically in Gibraltar. And there exists this banner with something written in the Spanish language, like a Spanish world present there. However, that is merely a theory. That is the reason why I refrain from discussing this topic. My intention is to immediately express my apologies for the numerous stories that I overlooked, failed to mention, or skipped due to a straightforward explanation. We had just over an hour, and I wanted to get the minimum done, so there would still be time left for questions. So I apologize if anyone was interested in anything. I didn't mention it. Thanks. See you later. Thanks. Until we meet again.